Strike on Takadana. This is your first look at one of the brand new pieces of content that's coming to the Star Wars Battlefront 2 beta. Something that hasn't been shown off before and in my opinion offers one of the best experiences of the game that I've played so far. A couple of weeks back EA and DICE invited me to their Stockholm studio to play the beta version of Battlefront 2. They gave us access to everything that we would have on offer and of course most of us were looking forwards to strike. Assault on Thede in the Galactic Assault game mode that was first shown at EA Play, Starfighter Assault on Fondor that was shown at Gamescom, and Arcade, the single player element of the beta, doesn't give you the same feeling as proper multiplayer combat. We all wanted to get our hands on Strike. Now I'll preface this video by stating I had to turn off the accompanying music during gameplay which somewhat deadens the atmosphere whilst you're playing. John Williams' music for Star Wars is copyrighted and I couldn't risk getting a copyright strike so like most other people playing with me that day, the music was switched off. But I can say that with it on, we did play some content that we didn't record. The whole round is far more immersive. If you've played the first game then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The music changes depending on the state of the round and it rises and it falls with the action and it's extremely well done. Unfortunately however I had to take that out but once the open beta comes out for everybody in a few days time you'll be able to hear for yourself just how awesome it is. And just to make sure you remember all of this gameplay is work in progress. This isn't the final product and my impressions are purely based off of this content. Things could be different once the final game launches in November. So take everything I say today with a pinch of salt basically. The strike game mode is a smaller scale game mode featuring two teams of eight fighting it out over objectives which again like Galactic Assault are unique to the map that you're playing on. Here on Takadana the resistance are defending Maz Kanata's castle from the First Order who've been tasked with breaching that castle, stealing an artifact and escaping via an extraction point. The artifact can be carried by any of the First Order Stormtroopers providing they're not a reinforcement soldier and if that carrier is defeated then the artifact is dropped on the ground. This then allows the resistance to defend that location temporarily to send the artifact back to its original location or another First Order Stormtrooper can come in and claim the artifact again and continue to try and make it to the extraction point. It's a bit like a capture the flag scenario but only one team in this case has a flag to try and get to their point. First impressions of the mode are really good because it focuses the action around the artifact that is the objective and depending on where the artifact is you'll end up with lots of different types of gameplay. If the artifact is in its original location, that's inside Maz's cantina, then you'll find a lot of bottleneck choke points where the two teams will clash quite regularly. Stormtroopers will be trying to breach the doorways into the castle and the resistance are hunkered down in there covering all the entrances. If the artifact has been stolen and then it's dropped out in the forest somewhere then you've got some longer range engagements coming into play mixed with close quarter fighting as the stormtroopers try to recover the artifact and the resistance are protecting it close by. The map plays really really well and it offers plenty of cover in both locations and it looks and feels exactly like the Takadana location from the Force Awakens movie and of course that adds a lot of fantasy feels when you're playing around. The two different teams, the Resistance and the First Order Stormtroopers, they are really well made character models and they look almost exactly as you'd expect them to look. No corners have been cut and the cantina location inside Maz's castle, that fits right in too, it looks really really detailed. The team who built this level did a very good job, not just getting the map to feel like the location that it's modelled off, but to get the scale right as well. It doesn't feel like they've shrunken it down or they've changed the way that it looks purely to make it suit gameplay better. They've actually found a way to make the gameplay feel exactly right by making it look exactly like it does in the movie. I guess that's the entire point of making a game based off a series of films and stories but the team at DICE who made this map have nailed the environment and the feeling. It remains to be seen if they've done just as well on other maps in this game.
Because Strike is a smaller game mode, there are some differences to the standard Galactic Assault gameplay that you've seen on Feed and will be available on other maps. There are no heroes available in the Strike game mode, but reinforcement characters are available. And these are like your in-between characters. They possess more power than a standard character, but they aren't the same level as a hero. Now the Resistance, they have access to a Jump Trooper, who's equipped of course with a Jump Pack and a Smart Rocket, and they have access to a Wookiee Warrior, which is a sort of scaled down Chewbacca who bellows out random Wookiee noises whilst wrecking people with his crossbow. The First Order has access to a Flame Trooper, which of course carries a flamethrower that's really good for close range attacks, and they've also got their own Jump Trooper as well. These different reinforcements, they help break up the gameplay a bit if things are getting a little bit stuck, and they're actually really good rewards for players who've got enough battle points to unlock them. Now I will say that the First Order Flame Trooper, it was very difficult to gauge how far the flames were going in front of you and sort of difficult to know how close you needed to get to an enemy in order to defeat them. So that's something that I think the team need to work on, but overall, once you get it in close quarters, it's a really satisfying character to use. Another piece of feedback that I'd like to give is if the First Order managed to extract the artifact to the extraction point, the time at which they have to stand at the extraction point is extremely short. I'm not kidding, it's like three or four seconds and then the extraction takes place. Now, I will give the fact that there isn't much cover around the extraction point, so extending that time they need to wait there might put them at a massive disadvantage, but I feel right now, once they get there, the Resistance don't really have a lot of time to do anything about it. So maybe extending the time that the Stormtroopers have to wait and defend the extraction point would lead to a better gameplay experience overall. That's just my feeling, not everybody else felt that way, but in my opinion, I think that might improve the game mode a little bit more. For the strike game mode in general, I'm not actually sure how many maps will be supporting it. We know that Galactic Assault will be available on 11 maps in the base game, three of them from the prequel trilogy, five from the original trilogy, and then three more from the Force Awakens era, but Strike hasn't been detailed in that way yet. Considering it's a smaller game mode overall, I'd be confident of it also being included in those 11 locations. Now alongside these two modes, we also have Blast, which is essentially Team Deathmatch, and Heroes vs Villains, so if only one of the game modes were to be included in the 11 locations, I think people might react to that negatively, but having said that, Strike is very much focused on objective play, which is what I like to see, and it relies more on infantry battles rather than looking to include vehicle combat, both on the ground and from the sky. The only sort of higher level battles that go on are when the reinforcement soldiers come in, which I think adds a little bit more flavour to the gameplay. So overall, I actually really, really like the Strike game mode. Now, I know for a fact that this mode was designed specifically for Battlefront 2 to create another mode that draws on all of the stories, all the lore, all the scenarios that the Star Wars universe has, rather than just shoehorning a standard shooter game mode into Battlefront 2, like Domination, for example. And I'm really glad that the team at DICE went down this route, because like Galactic Assault, every map will feel different despite it being the same game mode. I know a lot of people will want to play those bigger game modes when the beta goes live, but you should definitely give Strike a go and you'll see the beauty that is Takadana as well. The environment is absolutely incredible and every single time DICE come out with a new game, I think it will only be a little bit better than the previous one, which was of course Battlefield 1. But I'm wrong here, this looks even better than Battlefield 1 by a country mile. And I was playing at 1080p, 60fps, so make sure you get in on Takadana, it's probably the most beautiful map that you can look at in the beta. Thanks very much for watching however, make sure you leave me your thoughts down below in the comments section, I'll be trying to read as many as I can, and the open beta goes live for everybody on October the 6th, so make sure you give it a try. But again, thanks very much for watching, and until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.